All right, we're on our little uh, patrol through here, <laughs> trying to find where the hell our I'm fucking lost. Competition's going, but this is good because I needed some uh, some cardio today. Ready to rock. Wake up. We're all we do is blow down hogs with all the exotic. One of the guys wants to a mini gun out there. <laughs> <laughs> He's 45, right? Yeah. Nice. You're like the fourth person to shoot it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm
Now Fine. they do Thank also you. do the Park 15 fighter in plastic polymer. Uh huh. But the aluminum was better. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. But the link you sent me, that's aluminum? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. oh, good. Sorry. I, I was giving a hard time here. No, no, no. That's good. And it's a two piece. Yeah. Oh, it's a two piece. Yeah. 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 So me and Dayton figured out why I'm having jams every 10 rounds. Uh, if you look at this shin right here, this is why I'm never going to shoot fucking reloads again and just fly with ammo next time because I paid for this garbage. What do you think about that, Dayton? It's, uh, it is the curse of the match. <laughs> yeah, well, it is what it is. Uzi action over here. Very cool.
The second shot hit it. Oh, I can make this and then never again. Formal, chill debrief after our recent Lethal Weapons Texas match. I'm really excited to go for it. You guys probably saw that uh, we were advertising heavy for it on the channel and on Instagram. And just kind of want to go like over our thoughts and feelings about the match, along with some of the gear we ran and our rifles too. Uh, so, give you a basic overview of the match. Lethal Weapons Texas was put on by uh, Clay Owens of... Uh, Clayco47, big YouTube channel. He's a really nice guy. And he also put it on with a partnership with uh, Sons of Liberty Gunworks and build pretty, pretty decent ARs. So, match was retro themed, uh, iron sights only. Uh, there were two categories retro mod and then pure retro. Retro mod was if you had like a light on your gun or uh, some aftermarket parts, uh, still no optics allowed. And then retro was pure, like it, it has to look exactly as it did uh, the day it came off the factory. Um, saw a lot of different guns that people were shooting, a lot of like fouls, G3s, uh, tons of retro AR builds of every flavor. Um, personally, I used a Beretta AR70. So basically, the if, for those of you who don't know what the AR-70 is, you've probably seen me shoot it on some of our raw match footage shorts. But um, it's a 5.56 five, uh, military service rifle used by the Italians. Um, the Italians mainly use the, the newer version of the AR-70-90. This is an original AR-70 from the, the 1980s. And 5.56... Um, five, five, Two lug rotating bolts with a um, front tension recoil spring. Um, basically, how this rifle came about was um, Beretta approached Holt in the 1960s, wanting a technical data package export license for the M16 because uh, they were really into it. And Colt went, ha, "No, 
So Beretta said, fine, we'll build our own modern assault rifle with blackjack and hookers. And then they partnered with SIG before it was SIG Sauer. Uh, they did some R&D for a couple of years and then realized they hated each other. Uh, and so mommy and daddy divorced. SIG took the kids and the R&D for the rifle turned into the SIG 550, which is the famous Swiss military rifle that uh, everyone loves to show off uh, and flex, whatever. And then Beretta took their R&D uh, from the, that project and turned it into this, the AR-70. So this is a, this is not a kit build, this is a commercial pre van There's something like 500 to 1,000 in the U.S. Beretta's records are kind of hazy on how many were imported. Um, this is the one made for the U.S. market. So typically these would have a grenade launcher sight and a gas cut off of the grenade launcher. However, uh, this one lacks both of those to, to be compliant with the U.S. market. Um, KK, what were you running the match? Uh, you guys will all know what this is. Um, anyone who's seen Vietnam movies or know about the SOG guys. This is a Colt Reproduction XM177E2. Um, about as close as you can get. It's got the original, you know, easy to identify flash suppressor. It's got the, uh, all the, uh, you know, government marking, marking, uh, you know, property of U.S. government. It's actually even got the auto marking. Obviously, you can't put it to auto. It's got the only two-point adjustable stock as the classic. And, uh, yeah, probably my favorite AR. Only problem I had, unfortunately, we went down there. We had some ammo issues. Um, we used reloads because we didn't want to fly on a plane with ammunition. And, uh, unfortunately, I had a lot of jams, but I did get practice doing a lot of immediate actions. Miller, you had what, like two jams or something? I had um, one pretty serious malfunction on a stage. You'll you'll probably see it when we, you, we release the match footage, which will be after uh, this intro. So if you want to, you don't like hearing us talk, you can go ahead and skip through this. Um, but I had one where it was a case separation. The basically the the rifle's extractor ripped off the back half of the case, left the the front of the case and the neck in the chamber and it made me bomb a stage. I missed a whole bunch of targets because of it because I had to, to deadline the rifle and do some um, some uh, repairs on it. But I managed to get it back up and running, got that piece of case out and uh, was fine after that. And then I had one malfunction that was uh, induced actually by me. I, had a, I did a, a really shoddy, mediocre reload and it uh, caused the gun not to go in the battery all the way. So, but yeah, we were having some issues with the ammunition, but we, we managed to get it figured out. Uh, overall, we we both did fairly well in spite of uh, ammunition issues and malfunctions. Um, I ended up placing 117 overall and 67 in my division, which was retro light carbine. Um, which is like a, a, a factory original rifle in 5.56. Um, how'd you end up doing? The match with all the jams, uh, what did I get? I think I got 153 out of 308. So you got me in the match, but we did do an MP5 face-off and I did win that, so. That, it, 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 that, <laughs> it, that is your consolation prize for yes. me beating you. But overall, it was an awesome experience, a lot of fun. Next year, either gonna bring an AK or just fly with my own ammo. And uh, you know, we're gonna definitely, hopefully gonna go again next year. I would, I would love to go again next year. Um, another interesting piece of kit I used in the match that everyone's kind of uh, buzzing about is this. This is the heat rig from Commando Store. And you can all see that. So, those of you who haven't seen the movie Heat, which should be very few of you if you're watching this channel, mm -hmm. um, Heat, first of all, is the greatest gun guy movie of all time. Uh, lots of really cool 80s and 90s military service rifles in, in play in that movie. Um, but basically, these are the under the suit uh, chess rigs that the, the guys in Heat use to rob the, the bank at the end, the huge, the massive 10 minute gunfight. 
uh, which is really interesting. Um, and Commando Store made a really good reproduction of the rig. Um, they modified it. So the original rigs, their props, the magazines are all sewn in, so they can't really be used. Uh, but they did make a working version of it. It's got an interesting magazine release system where basically you reach in, you twist on it. Let me see if I can do it. Like it's, it's easier to do with the vest on when you do this side, it's a little easier. Basically, you grab it, the magazine, twist, pull, and then remove it. Um, and I have to say, this, this rig worked great for the match. Um, you know, it was like, the stages were pretty big. I only had a couple reloads. I had one stage where I had to reload a lot because I was just, you know, missing. And I uh, and one stage I forgot to load all my max. That was that was what stage eight. That was the targets were out to like two hundred yeah. yards. That, that was, was that was also my most difficult. Yeah, that was our our longer range stage. Uh, the farthest target was like two hundred twenty five yards. You'll see us get to struggle with that. We're both USPSA shooters. We're used to mag dumping into trash at very close range on the move. Um, with pistols. Yeah, with, with, with <laughs> pistols. Um, 